The United States has many interests and concerns as a global power in middle America, but none is as important as the Panama Canal, which allows ocean-going vessels to cross between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. The distance saved is about 8,000 nautical miles. Here, in these trenches now filled with water, thousands of laborers died of yellow fever and malaria when the builder of the Suez Canal, Ferdinand de Lesseps, more than a century ago, tried to construct a route across this narrowest part of the Central American land bridge, then owned by Colombia. The United States intervention led to a Panamanian declaration of independence, treaties to allow American occupation of the canal zone, and construction of one of the world's great engineering projects. The Panama Canal opened in 1914. The canal zone became a U.S. outpost serving many purposes. Among the roles the Panama Canal Zone has played is that of the tropical forest you can see here. During the Vietnam War, United States troops were trained in this area to prepare for the conditions they will encounter uh, during the Indochina War. A series of giant parallel locks at each end of the inland waterway raises and lowers ships 85 feet from and to sea level. Each lock has two doors, 65 feet wide and seven feet thick, set on hinges. They're moved by motors recessed in the lock walls. Each lock chamber is 1,000 feet long and 110 feet wide. Ships with a draft of as much as 39 and a half feet can traverse these enormous locks, including, as we see here, one of the world's largest luxury liners, the QE2. Here a container ship from East Asia is pulled into the Miraflores locks on the Pacific side by a locomotive called a mule. When traffic is heavy in one direction and light in the other, the adjoining locks are used to move ships through on the same course. Normally, two-way traffic prevails. Great care must be taken to avoid damage to the structures and all traffic moves very slowly and under controlled conditions. Elsewhere on the world's waters, uh, when a pilot comes on board, the captain retains ultimate authority. Not here on the Panama Canal. The pilot is in complete control. The mules move on rails laid in the concrete steps next to the locks, guiding the ship into the next chamber. After the doors close, the chamber is flooded and the ship rises. When the locks were built, an artificial lake was created between them, Lake Gatun. In the background, you can see a dam that sustains the water level at 85 feet. The water is important for other reasons. Not only does it form a route between the two sets of locks on the Atlantic and Pacific sides, but also it creates the availability of water that fills those locks each time a ship ascends the stairs. The problem is that the water supply to Lake Gatun is in danger. People are farming, cutting down the vegetation, deforesting the area around the lake, creating two problems. One, reduced inflow, and two, increased silting. At the moment, the Panamanian government is involved in a major reforestation program, hoping to anchor the soil around Lake Gatun. But you know, it's not the locks, it's the lake that's critical. Each time a ship goes through, more than 50 million gallons of fresh water go wasted to the oceans. And it can't continue unless the supply remains adequate. This is a tropical area. Lots of rain falls here. But even in tropical areas, forest destruction will reduce the flow of water. Lake Gatun, over 163 square miles in area, is one of the world's largest artificial lakes. It connects the cuts that lead to the locks. When you traverse it, you will see several ships at anchor. Why should these vessels delay their transit, which already takes more than 12 hours from pilot station to pilot station? Because a stay in the lake's fresh water will rid them of saltwater barnacles. After nearly a century of construction, maintenance, administration, and operation, the original treaties by which the United States acquired the canal zone in perpetuity have been superseded, and the Republic of Panama will acquire the canal on December 31, 1999. Agreement between the U.S. and Panama was reached during the Carter administration in the late 1970s. And during the 20-year transition period, the American presence in the zone shrank. The question is whether the Republic of Panama has the capacity to carry out the operations and maintenance required to sustain the canal's critical functions.